Good evening, Cleveland and Columbus sports fans. This is Jen B, and you're tuned in live to the show of the land right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We've got a lot to cover today. We've got some Guardians roster changes, some game updates and schedule updates. Um, we've got Browns, a couple more roster changes have been made, and week one is coming up on Sunday against the Bengals. It's officially Bengals week. And then we have college football week one review and ne- uh, lineup of next week's games. We have some updates on the crew and a couple of updates on the Blue Jackets. So there's going to be a lot going on today. So be sure to listen to all of the new news that's been happening throughout Cleveland and Columbus sports over the last week or so. So let's get into the Guardians. So the Guardians had quite a few roster changes this past week. First, uh, they claimed right-handed pitchers Lucas Giolito and Reynaldo Lopez, as well as left-handed pitcher Matt Moore from the Angels. Cal Quantrill and David Fry were activated from IL. Jose Tena was recalled from AAA. Uh, pitchers Hunter Gaddis and I'm not sure of his first name. I think it's Daniel Morris were optioned back to Triple A. Uh, Ronaldo Lopez and Matt Moore were added to the active roster, and then Karen Check was optioned to Triple A so that Lucas Giolito could be added to the active roster and. He, at, before last night, I don't know where he stands now. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But he was eighth in the AL in strikeouts. Uh, Josh Naylor is back. He was activated from the IL. And the corresponding roster move was for Oscar Gonzalez to be optioned back to Triple A. So SpongeBob is back in Triple A, but Josh is back. Woohoo! And, uh, just heard an update yesterday on Bieber and McKenzie. They are both slated to pitch, I believe, in double A. Might be triple A. I'm not 100% positive, but towards the end of this week. So they are expected back hopefully mid September. So then we will have our full starting lineup of pitchers back so hopefully hopefully then Curry won't have to start anymore but he actually did well his last outing but we'll get to that when we get to that game so this past week they finished up the series in Minnesota against the Twins and they went two and one in that series we already talked about game one which they lost but they did win game two and game three. So in game two, they won four to two. Gavin Williams got the start. Unfortunately, though, he went out after the first inning. When he was throwing out one of his pitches about halfway through the first inning, his, I don't know what exactly happened, but his cleat got stuck or something and he like stumbled forward and it, it didn't look pretty. But he finished out the inning and he seemed to be okay. But then when it came time for the the pitcher to come out for the second inning, it wasn't him. And then it was announced a little bit later that it was soreness in his right knee. So Hunter Gaddis took over in the second inning. In the top of the third, Jose Ramirez scored on a wild pitch. The top of the fourth... Cole Calhoun had an RBI fielder's choice ground out. 
And then in the top of the seventh, Will Brennan had an RBI single. So the final for that game ended up being 4-2. to two. Guardians won. Woohoo! Game three was a 5-2 to two win. Tanner Bybee got the start, and he had eight strikeouts. Pretty good showing for him. There wasn't a whole lot going on in that game until the eighth inning. So in the eighth inning, Stephen Kwan had an RBI single. And then in the top of the ninth, a runner scored on a wild pitch. Twins were having some issues with some wild pitches. (laughs) And then in the bottom of the ninth, Trevor Steffen came in and struck out the side. The score at that time was tied at 2-2, two to two, so we went into extra innings. In the top of the 10th inning, Cole Calhoun hit a three-run home run to give the Guardians the 5-2 to two lead. And they closed it out and won 5-2. to two. So then they started the series against the Rays. And they went 2-1 and one against the Rays. Surprise, surprise. I was not expecting much from this series, honestly. But they came out and won game one. And I was like, "Woo! this is great. This is a great start. So they're now on a three-game winning streak. So while Quantrill hit, pitched... In game one against the Rays, and they won three to two. He made it six innings, which is pretty good for his first game back from IL. Uh, in the bottom of the seventh, Bo Naylor had an RBI double that gave the Guardians the lead three to two. So then in the ninth inning, Class A came in for the save and got the save. And he now leads the American League in saves at 37. Game two was a 7-6 to six win. Logan Allen got the start. In the bottom of the first, Andres Jimenez had an RBI ground out to make, bring the score to 1-1. One to one. In the bottom of the second... Oscar Gonzalez had an RBI ground out to bring the score to 2-1, to one, Guardians. Bottom of the fourth, Arias hit a two-run home run to bring the score to 4-1. to one. And then in the bottom of the ninth, Quan had an RBI single to bring the score to 5-5. Five to five. The Rays ended up tie, or actually taking the lead 5-4, to four, but Quan tied it back up in the bottom of the ninth, and then they made it through the 10th inning with no scoring, and then in the 11th inning, Jose Tena hit an RBI single to tie the game back up, and there was one out, then Quan came up and hit a sacrifice fly and scored the runner at third for the win seven to six um the runner actually (laughs) didn't didn't score easily it wasn't a very deep hit but the throw from the outfield to the catcher was way off so the runner was able to score without incident i believe he would have been safe on the throw even if it had been in line but It went all the way to the backstop, so he was definitely safe. So then they came back. Game two, we were hoping for the sweep, but we didn't get it. Uh, Curry got the start in game three. He went five and a third innings and got six strikeouts. It was probably his best start. He did did pretty well, but the, the Rays scoring throughout the series was almost all on home runs. So, you know, when if the Guardians' offense wasn't scoring, that's bad. But thankfully they were. But they just couldn't, they couldn't get ahead in this one. They lost 6-2. to two. In the bottom of the third, Ramon Laureano had an RBI single, bring the score to 1-2. to two. 
bottom of the fifth, Josh Naylor had an RBI single to tie it up at two, and then it was all downhill from there. The Guardians didn't score anymore, and obviously the the Rays scored four more. So then we moved on to the Twins at home. The series goes yesterday through tomorrow. They are actually getting ready to start right about now, game two, but... Game one, do we really want to even talk about it? It was so bad. So game one, (laughs) Lucas Giolito got his first start as a guardian. And it was a rough start. (laughs) In the top of the first, he gave up a solo home run. In the top of the second, he walked a run in and then gave up a grand slam. So at that point, it was six to nothing. (laughs) And then in the top of the third, he gave up another solo home run, an RBI double, an RBI sack fly. So by the end of the third, it was nine to nothing. And he was at 76 pitches. So in the bottom of the third, Jose Ramirez hit an RBI triple to make it nine to one. Not that that was much of a help, but you know, at least they scored. In the top of the fourth, Sam Henches came in to pitch. In the top of the sixth, De Los Santos came in to pitch. And he gave up a two RBI double, bringing the score to 9 to 11. Then David Fry came in to pitch. Yes, you heard that right. David Fry, the catcher slash utility player came in to pitch. I think the fastest pitch he threw was 57 or 58 miles an hour. And to be honest, I have no idea how long he pitched because I had to go pick my daughter up from her friend's house and I didn't bother to turn the game back on, turn it on on the radio. Because at this point, when I left, it was 13 to 1. When I got in my car... As I was putting my phone in my little phone holder thing, I saw a notification that it was like 18 to something. Like literally just the amount of time it took me to walk from my living room to my car. They scored five runs. (laughs) So the final ended up being 20 to six. And at least three of those runs for the Guardians were scored in the bottom of the ninth inning while the twins had I believe it was their second baseman pitching so that was that was quite quite a game and not how we want it to go for the guardians against the twins because the twins are the ones ahead of us in the AL Central as of right now the guardians are six games back they have two more games against the Twins. If they can get those two wins, that will help significantly because that will bring it down to four. But I just, I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. Uh, Today is Stephen Kwan's birthday. So happy birthday to Stephen Kwan, our left fielder. And in some not so wonderful news, I just heard that Terry Francona on a radio interview on Sirius XM said that his time is done. So it sounds as though he will be retiring after this season. So that is very sad to hear. And I hate to see him go, but he's got to put his health and his family first. So I understand, but it's going to stink. But game two, as I said, is underway. It just started at 610 and Tanner Bybee is getting the start. So I will have updates on that next week. So now we're going to take a short break because that wraps up everything with the Guardians. And I will be back to talk about the Browns on the show of the land. With Jen B on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Do you love 
college football. And do you want to hear a college football show dedicated to all this college football, including junior college and the Triple CAA and the NJCAA, the NAIA, and the NCAA, including Division Three, Division Two, Division One AA in the FCS, and Division One Single A in the FBS? Well, then look no further. Join myself, Larry B., and my colleagues, Mr. H-Town Blake, Blake Henley, and Mr. Christian Espinoza, each week during the college football season for the latest in college football on Three and Out College Edition, right here on IE Sports Radio, your directory for all that is sports. Sports, the show where we go over the Chiefs, the Royals, KC Current, Sporting KC, MU, and oh yeah, if we got time, we'll even throw in some of that KU stuff for my people on the 913 South. Come hang out with us every Sunday, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Sports fans, are you looking for a sports show that maybe isn't 100% about sports? Then you might want to check out the Sports Couple Perspectives right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Most sports shows cover only scores and stats, and while we're not opposed to that, we dig a little deeper into sports issues and some of the hottest topics in athletics. In addition to sports, we take a journey through my neck of the woods, pop culture, with movie reviews of both sports and non-sports films. Speaking of pop culture, make sure to participate in our game nights, where we quiz each other on our specialties, and you, the listeners, can win IE Sports Radio apparel. We always have a great time learning more about each other's worlds, one show at a time. So join us each week on the Sports Couple Perspectives, right here on IE Sports Radio, your directory for all that is sports. You're back live with Jen B on the show of the land right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. All right, so let's talk about some Browns moves. So over the last week, the Browns claimed Khalif Halasi, Lacey, I'm not sure how to say that. Off of waivers, he was a cornerback with Kansas City. And they waived A.J. Green the third in the corresponding roster move. For the practice squad, they added Lorenzo Burns, Jalen Darden, Michael Dunn, Hassan Hall, Tristan Hill, Sam Kamara, Tanner McAllister, Zaire mitchell Payton, Lonnie Phelps, Charlie Thomas the third, Isaiah Thomas, uh, Austin Watkins, fan favorite in preseason. And they also added from other teams, Lucas Havrisic, a kicker, Alex Leatherwood, an offensive tackle, PJ Walker, a quarterback. And then they re-added AJ Green the third to the practice squad after they after he cleared waivers. Another move that was made was Jordan Kanasik was put on IR and they re-signed Maurice Hurst to the active roster. So there weren't any big surprises there. There was a lot of talk that the Browns were going to bring Kellen Mond back on the practice squad and Actually, the first few reports that came out on what on players who had signed for to the practice squad included Kellen Mond, but it turned out that they actually 
agreed to terms with PJ Walker instead. So I believe that is an upgrade. I saw him play for Carolina last year and from what I saw of Kellen Mond in the preseason this year, PJ Walker is significantly better. So they got a, a veteran in there to help in the quarterback room. So that is good news because I was a little concerned how that dynamic was going to work with DTR as the second string quarterback and no other quarterbacks on the roster. So there was no veteran for Deshaun to bounce stuff off of, but now there's a veteran, albeit not the greatest veteran, but a veteran nonetheless. Um, the Browns also announced the team captains this week, and the team captains for the 2023-2024 season are Deshaun Watson, Joe Batonio, Miles Garrett, Anthony Walker, and Charlie Hewlett. And if you know me, you know Charlie Hewlett is my guy. Love that guy. Because who doesn't love their long snapper? Like, seriously. You can't do special teams without a long snapper. You just can't. But uh, there's been some blowback about Deshaun Watson being named a captain over Nick Chubb. And uh, a lot of people are saying due to his... um, Taboo from when uh, he uh, left Texas and uh, came here that he doesn't deserve to be a team captain, but the team captains are voted on by the team. So his colleagues voted him captain. So if that's how they feel, that's how they feel. They're the ones that have to be in the locker room with them, and they're the ones that have to play with them. So if they feel he should be the captain, then he should be the captain. And as far as Nick Chubb is concerned, he was named captain last year, but we also didn't have a definitive starting quarterback last year. So are you going to name Jacoby Brissett captain when he's starting for X number of games only? Are you going to name Deshaun Watson captain when he can't even be with the team for the first 10 weeks? Doesn't make any sense. So knowing what I know about Nick Chubb, I'm pretty sure he doesn't care at all that he's not a captain this year. So I feel Deshaun Watson would be a better team captain as far as leadership and being vocal is concerned. Nick Chubb is a kind of lead by example kind of guy. So it it makes sense to me for Deshaun Watson to be the captain and instead of Nick Chubb. So, you know, it is what it is. But it was voted on by the team. So there you have it. So as of yesterday, I haven't seen any updates yet today. And they the team was not practicing today. So that could be why there haven't been any updates. Um. Ward is still in concussion protocol, so they are hopeful that he will be available for Sunday's game, but as of yesterday, he is still in concussion protocol. So that is a little worrisome, especially given that the depth in the cornerback room is Cam Mitchell and Khalif Hillassi. So that would leave a lot on Greg Newsom and Martin Emerson against the Bengals receiving core. So we'll see what happens with that. But hopefully he'll clear concussion protocol, but I am not holding out hope. The last concussion he had, he did end up missing three games. And it's only been in a week and a half since he got the concussion. So we'll see. But... On to Bengals week. So Burrow is back at practice. So the is Burrow going to start? Isn't Burrow going to start? Is no longer in question. Burrow is going to start. So let's talk expectations. So we all, all know the Browns history with week one. They finally got a week one win last year on a Cade York 58-yard field goal. 
So Cade York is no longer with the team, so that won't be happening. And from what I understand about Dustin Hopkins, he's a little sketchy beyond 50 yards. So I don't know if we can call him out there for a 58-yard game winner. But hopefully it won't come to that. Um, I expect the Browns to start out a little slow. It will be Deshaun Watson's first... Uh, first regular season game with a full off season. So, and there were a few changes made on offense this off season as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if they start out a little bit slow, but like we saw in the Kansas city game in preseason, they started out a little off, but they got it together and ended up scoring two touchdowns before the end of the first quarter. So I'm not overly concerned that they'll be too, too slow, but we'll, we'll see how it all comes together. But I, I expect them by the second or at least halfway through the second quarter to be doing pretty well and have figured out their timing and all of that. I mean, maybe not a hundred percent, but at least look like a competitive offense. And then defense, I mean, anytime the first team defense was in during preseason, they look phenomenal. So I don't expect any major issues there. The only changes will be whether or not Denzel Ward can play and Miles Garrett will actually be in there where he didn't play at all during the preseason. So that Miles Garrett being in there can only make the defense better. So not worried about that. Um, he rarely plays in the preseason, so it's nothing new for him and he always looks good and he generally does well against the Bengals. They do have a new left tackle in Orlando Brown, so we'll see how that ends up going. But Jonah Williams was moved over to right tackle, so maybe, uh, Jim Schwartz will switch things up and put, uh, Miles Garrett on the right tackle this game. I don't know. We'll see. But... I think I think Zeke could hold his own against Orlando Brown <laughs> if he has to. And Miles Garrett can definitely overpower Jonah Williams. Um the Browns are five and one against Joe Burrow. So I'm not expecting this game to be overly challenging for the Browns. But I did see a stat the other day that when the Browns have two or more sacks on Burrow, they have won. So the only game that they didn't have two or more sacks is the one they lost. And that was the only game Deshaun Watson played against the Bengals. So it was, you know, during that six games at the end of last season when he was after he got off suspension. So I'm not overly concerned uh, Joe Burrow hasn't been practicing until this past week with the calf injury. So I expect the Bengals to start out a, a little slow like they tend to do in the early part of the season. So I am expecting a Browns win, but you never know. So we'll we'll see what happens, but I am counting on a Browns win. So I did post a poll earlier today on Twitter to see, or on X, sorry, to see what everybody thinks. And the results as of now, with 72 votes in, 81% think the Browns will win, 19% for the Bengals. So that's pretty positive. Um, We did also just today have the first unofficial depth chart posted so let's see we have wide receiver one Amari Cooper and Marquise Goodwin left tackle Jedrick Wills and James Hudson left guard Joel Batonio center Ethan Posick Nick Harris and Luke Whipler right guard Wyatt Teller right tackle Jack Conklin and Dewan Jones Um, right tackle, tight end, David Njoku, Jordan Akins, and Harrison Bryant, 
Wide receiver two, Donovan Peoples-Jones, David Bell. Quarterback, of course, Deshaun Watson. And then DTR. Running back, the one, the only, Nicholas Jamal Chubb. Jerome Ford and Pierre Strong Jr. Wide receiver three, Elijah Moore and Cedric Tillman. So no big surprises on the offense. It's exactly what we expected it to be. Uh, defense, we have Miles Garrett and Ogbo Okoronkwo at defensive end. Defensive tackle, Dalvin Tomlinson and Maurice Hurst. Second defensive tackle, Jordan Elliott and Shelby Harris. Defensive end, Zadarius Smith and Alex Wright. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but Alex Wright returned to practice. So that is amazing. We expected him to go on IR and he did not. Linebacker, uh, JOK and Tony Fields. Then uh, middle linebacker, Anthony Walker and Ma'amu Diabate. And then Sione Takitaki and Matthew Adams. And then at cornerback, we have Denzel Ward and Cam Mitchell, Greg Newsom and Martin Emerson. At strong safety, Grant Delpit and DeAnthony Bell. At free safety, Juan Thornhill and Rodney McLeod. So only one surprise for me there. I am kind of surprised that Jordan Elliott is listed above Shelby Harris, but it could be because of how late Harris was added to the roster. I'm not sure if that's the reason or if he actually out, if Jordan Elliott actually outplayed him. So I'll be interested to see how that works. But from what I hear about Jim Schwartz's defenses, there will be a lot of rotation going on. So I'm sure they will both get significant playing time. Unless, of course, one of them doesn't look so great. Then it might, that might change. And then for special teams, we have at punter Corey Bohorquez. Kicker, Dustin Hopkins. Holder, Corey Bohorquez. Kick returner, Jerome Ford. Punt returner, Donovan Peoples-Jones. Long snapper, of course, is Charlie Hewlett. So again, no big surprises there. Uh, we expected Jerome Ford and DPJ to be doing the return duties after um, I just drew a blank on his name. <sighs> what the heck was that guy? Jakeem Grant. After Jakeem Grant's injury in the Kansas City game. So, no big surprises. Um, Jerome Ford and DPJ handled the return duties last season as well. Uh, DPJ actually had a punt return for a touchdown. So, they handled it pretty well, actually. So, I'm I'm hoping for a good showing come Sunday. Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time against the Bengals. Go Browns! So, with the season getting ready to start, wanted to do a little season prediction for you. So, I may be a little more optimistic than most, but I expect that the Browns Barring any catastrophic injuries like to Deshaun Watson, Miles Garrett, Nick Chubb, Dalvin Tomlinson, maybe even you can throw in there, and then probably the cornerbacks, the starting cornerbacks. Um, barring any catastrophic injuries there, and also I could, you can throw in the offensive line, some of it. We do not have any backup tackles right now other or backup guards right now other than Michael Dunn on the practice squad. So fingers crossed Joe Batonio and Wyatt Teller are good to go for a good long time. But uh, I expect, I think the floor for the Browns, if all goes according to plan and Deshaun Watson gets back to at least close to what he was in Houston, 10 and 7. 
I think the ceiling is probably around 12 and 5 just because of the strength of the schedule. They do have some pretty hard games, and of course, the division is always tough. So I'm looking at 10 and 7 to 12 and 5. So hopefully, hopefully I'm right. Maybe I even underestimated and they do even better than 12 and 5. That would be amazing. But I do expect a playoff run. Um, I feel like the only way the Browns won't make the playoffs is if it, if it comes down to a tiebreaker and there's like five teams that are 10 and 7 and you know, only seven can get into the playoffs and only three wild cards. So if they don't take the division, it gets even harder to get into the playoffs. So hopefully they'll take the division and we won't have to worry about it. But on my last note on the Browns, today is Alex Wright's birthday. So happy birthday to Alex Wright. So that's going to wrap things up for the Browns. And I'm going to take a short break. Then I'll be back to talk about What's happening, college football. Fans? Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on iSports Radio, your direct feed for all better sports. IE Sports Radio fans, it's your boy, the SoCal Saint, the host of the premier professional wrestling podcast online today, the IE Elite Wrestling Show. If you're a fan and have a passion for the world of professional wrestling, this is the show for you. I take you inside the ropes with all the athleticism, high-flying, and hard-hitting action, and then we take it backstage with all the backstage drama and backstabbing that goes on in the world of professional wrestling today. If something's going on in the world of professional wrestling, rest assured, the SoCal Saint knows what's going on, and he's going to let you know too. If you're a fan, check us out every Tuesday, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, only on IE Sports Radio. The IE Elite Wrestling Show, your direct feed for all this professional wrestling, on the only network that is your direct feed for all that is sports. Check us out. sports fans it's me your boy larry b and i want to walk you through the world of sports no 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 not just the mainstream major tv deal type sports although those are important too but let me be your guide to your journey of all sports from college to the pros the minors and everything in between each week we are talking sports galore with true diehards just like you from a hardcore fan's perspective that's sure to quench your thirst around leagues you may know all too well and some you may even discover here. That's right, sports fans. If you love sports of all kinds, enjoy hearing amazing sports stories and respect all sports because you know how difficult any of them can be to play or compete in, then this is your show. 
Join me, your boy Larry B, on the defining moment each week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports, and let the sports come to you. You're back live with Jen B on the show of the land right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. So we're going to talk some college football now. So was a big week in college football, week one for most teams. Um, Ohio State was ranked number three going into the week. They are currently ranked number five for going into week two. They played Indiana and they won 23 to three. Mayan Williams scored a touchdown on the first drive. Kyle McCord threw an interception in the second quarter. And Indiana ended up getting a field goal off of that interception. The next Ohio State drive, Devin Brown took over at quarterback, but he only played quarterback for one drive. The Buckeyes were up 10-3 to at the half. In the third quarter, with about six minutes left, McCord tried to run for a touchdown and failed to get the touchdown. And they ended up kicking a field goal, bringing the score to 13-3. to Then with about two minutes left in the third quarter, Mayan Williams scored another touchdown. Uh, the standouts in the game were Stover, the tight end. The defense looked pretty solid. I mean, they held Indiana to three points that they actually scored off of an interception. So, not bad. And, of course, Marvin Harrison Jr. looked good. He did have an injury towards the end of the second quarter that looked a little scary. He was having trouble walking, but he did come back out in the second half and play. So, it seems like he is okay. I have not seen any injury reports. So, it appears that he is good to go, which is good news for the Buckeyes since he's their best wide receiver. And um, the run game was pretty solid. All three running backs did fairly well. They, I mean, Indiana's defense was pretty solid too. Um, they did get a couple of stops for losses, but in the throughout the game, the running backs had quite a few decent runs and uh, of course Mayan Williams ran into touchdowns so they the running game looked pretty solid so the jury's still out on Kyle McCord it was his first game starting at quarterback I thought he looked decent most of the game he was his timing was a little off uh, but he had a couple of extremely great throws um and then of course he had the interception so you never want to see that but um from what I understand I did not watch Ohio State too much when CJ Stroud started at quarterback um at the time that CJ Stroud was named the quarterback they were flip-flopping quarterbacks like crazy so I tried to watch when I could, but I was not home a lot on Saturdays at that time. So uh, I was actually, I had a horrible job where I was working like seven days a week. So I was not able to watch a lot of games back then. But from what I understand, CJ Stroud's first start was not much better, if any better, than Kyle McCord's. So nothing to be too concerned about just yet. Let's see how he does the rest of the season give the kid a chance so Ohio State's next game is next Saturday against Youngstown State so the next game in the FBS was Akron at Temple Akron lost 24 to 21 and their next game is against Morgan State also 
on Saturday. Kent State got their butts kicked by UCF 56 to 6. And their next game is at Arkansas, also on Saturday. So next week, we'll go back to most college games being on Saturday. So that'll be nice. This week was kind of weird with games on Sunday and Monday. And a couple of, couple of surprises in some of those other games. But thankfully, none of them were in Ohio, Columbus, and Cleveland area. So... Um, also with Kent State, Nolan Rumler's birthday is today. So happy birthday to Nolan Rumler. Then for the FCS, Youngstown State played Valparaiso. Youngstown State is now ranked number 25 in the FCS. And they won 52 to 10. Their next game, as I just said, will be at OSU on Saturday. In Division Two, Ashland played Indiana University of Pennsylvania, and they lost 24-17. to And Ashland is now ranked 21. I believe they were 19 last week, so they dropped two spots. Their next game is against the number one team, Ferris State, on Saturday, 9-9. Notre Dame of Ohio played Ohio Dominican, and they won 23-21. And their next game is versus West Virginia Wesleyan on Saturday, 9-9. Tiffin played McKendry and won an astounding 79 to 14. Their next game is at St. Anselm St. Uh, St. Anselm on Saturday, 9-9. Finley played Truman and lost 20 to 10 and their next game is at Pace on Saturday. 9-9. Heidelberg played Hiram in Division 3 and won 68-14. to And their next game is at Ohio Northern, but not until 9-16. So they are off this week. And number 2, Mount Union played Defiance and won 45 to 6. And they stay ranked at number 2. Their next game is at Marietta on 9 16. So they are also off this week. John Carroll played Wisconsin Whitewater and lost 27 to 23. And their next game is at Baldwin Wallace also on 916. Baldwin Wallace played Mount St. Joseph and lost 39 to 33. And their next game is against Wilmington um this Saturday 99. So we had a couple of huge blowouts in uh, Division 2 and Division 3. The other teams, not so much, but... Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, and FCS. Youngstown won pretty handily against Valparaiso as well. But Tiffin, 79-14. to And Heidelberg, 68-14. to Mount Union, 45-6. to So... Hopefully they'll keep showing out and they'll uh, move up in the rankings. Maybe Mountain Union can take over that number one spot. And uh, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, that's about all for college football. So I'm going to take another short break. And then I'll be back to wrap things up with the crew and the Blue Jackets. And an update on the current status of the Guardians game and uh, 
then we'll we'll close things out. So I'll be back on the show of the land right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hello, ladies and sinners. Hello, sports fans around the world. Hello, IE Sports family. This is Cal Henderson, the host of IE Vegas, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio. If you folks are interested in sports in the Vegas area, if you're wanting to have a blast for one hour every Tuesday night from 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, This is a show built for the Vegas sports fans where we feature the Las Vegas Raiders, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Las Vegas Aces, and the University of Las Vegas, Nevada Rebels. Hopefully, fingers crossed, MLB team coming soon. Either way, if you folks are looking to have a blast for one hour each and every week, tune in Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you folks are interested in Vegas sports news, Go to our Twitter, at SinCities underscore I-E-S-R. And you can speak with me, the host, Kale Henderson, at Kale underscore Henderson on Twitter. At any time, be happy to reply. Always willing to reach out to our fans. Again, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Are you a fan of Buffalo sports? Are you thinking of changing loyalties and becoming a Buffalo sports fan? Do you even know where Buffalo is on the map? Did you know Canada is closer to Buffalo than New York City? Welcome to the Buffalo Huddle every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your host, Patty Bax. This is a podcast designed for you, the passionate sports fan. I know you love your sports. Who doesn't? I cover Buffalo sports and so much more by bringing in the human elements. I call it Buffalo sports with a twist. Join me as we take a journey into the world of Buffalo sports. I guarantee you'll fall in love with Buffalo just like I did. Each week, we start with an inspiration, question of the day, a Buffalo fun fact, and a weekly challenge to you, the listener. Come huddle up with me every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time for the Buffalo Huddle with Patty Bax on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. As we say in Buffalo, Go Bills! You're back live with Jen B on the show of the land right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. So real quick, we're going to get into the crew. They played Wednesday, August 30th against the Houston Dynamo. Yevhen Chaburko, hopefully I said that right, got his first MLS start. They ended up losing... That match, two to nothing. They played again on Saturday at Montreal. Montreal scored an open goal, giving the crew a one to nothing lead. And then Cucho Hernandez scored two more goals in the first half, bringing the score to three to nothing at the half. In the second half, Cucho scored a third goal, giving him his first career hat trick. And at Due to that, he was named Match Player of the Week. The final of that game was 4-2. to two. 
They moved up in the rankings from 6th to 4th in the division. Their next match is the 16th. I'm going to be busy on the 16th. (laughs) Against Orlando City. During the off week, captain and midfielder Darlington Nagby will be hosting a Pro Series event at Brown Stadium this Saturday, 9-9. And just today, the crew waived middle fielder Luis Diaz. For the Blue Jackets, number eight prospect David Jurisic was impressive in his first season with the team. And Adam Fontilli The number three overall pick was asked in college where he wanted to go. And he said, wait for it, Columbus. Can you believe it? When asked where he wanted to go, he said Columbus. And guess who drafted him? Columbus. Go Blue Jackets. So dreams really do come true. So I promised an update on the Guardian score. And I don't have one. So hold on one second. Let me look it up. Guardian schedule. Let's see. It is currently the bottom of the third. And the Guardians are losing 2 to nothing. So there's that. So we will be back next week to talk about all of the fun stuff with the first week of the NFL and more college football and more Guardians and hopefully it'll be some good news for the Guardians but that wraps things up for tonight thank you for joining me Jen B on the show of the land be sure to follow me on X Instagram and threads at Believe Land Girl And you can follow me on TikTok at Jen.BelieveLand. You can also follow the show on X at Show of the Land IE. Next up, the Buffalo Huddle with Patty Bax right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Catch me next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time on the Show of the Land for more on Cleveland and Columbus sports. On IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Have a great night, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs>